Victoria's opposition leader has taken a swipe at the Premier, saying he wants to remove him from his job in November. It comes as Matthew Guy joins calls for isolation payments to continue. Let's go live to Victorian political reporter Simon Love. Simon, what will Victoria be after at the next National Cabinet table next week? Well, Tanika, Victoria certainly joined the calls from other states for these isolation payments to continue. That emergency National Cabinet meeting, as you heard from Adam earlier, that'll be reconvened on Monday. The Victorian Premier, Daniel Andrews, has actually been on leave, been on holidays. He's expected to return on Monday, just in time for that emergency National Cabinet meeting. Yet to get any more detail out of the Victorian Government as to what exactly they're after. We know they're keen for those isolation payments to continue. Uh, Daniel Andrews's opponent, though, Matthew Guy, has actually uh, joined the government's calls for the payments to continue, but he also took an opportunity to take a swipe at the approach that Daniel Andrews, he says, has had in National Cabinet. Uh, take a listen. Yes, for those in, in exceptional circumstances that has been mentioned this morning, yes, I have. Yes, I would. I'm not going to dictate to him how to do his job. In November, I want to remove him from it and put in a new approach. And Simon, the Victorian government has admitted a data breach relating to hotel quarantine. Yes, this goes all the way back to uh, 2021 of the hotel quarantine program in 2020 when many staff from across the government agencies, including the Department of Education and the Victorian Curriculum Assessment Authority, they were asked and seconded to work in the hotel quarantine program. Now, it's been revealed through freedom of information documents obtained by the state opposition that, uh, that, that there was a data breach involving a staff member that was working for the Department of Education but seconded over to the hotel quarantine program. They had Outlook emails on their phone which included uh, data involving, uh, you know, in the FOI documents show that it was the potential exposure of information about travellers and staff in the COVID-19 hotel quarantine program, including names, contact numbers, dates of birth, addresses, and in some cases, passport numbers. But the government does stress to me that uh, none of that information they believe has been accessed. And although there were some fake invoices issued by that email account to schools, no payments were made. This was the opposition leader's response. Victorians have got every right to know where their data is being used and where it's been leaked, and particularly if any of it's been abused uh, by the people who have been accessing it. The government says, oh, well, it's only low level. That's not for them to make. That's not a decision of theirs. When it's your data, you should know. Interesting revelations there involving the hotel quarantine program, Danica. Of course, it was the subject of an inquiry ordered by the Premier. We'll just have to wait and see whether voters remember this in November. That seems to be the opposition slogan, but we'll just have to wait and see if, uh, if the voters actually care about this come to state election November the 26th.